Hello everybody, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to try to create a soundbot using Node.js and React. And uh, the idea with this soundbot is that we're going to have a server entity that will play all our audio and then we will have our client entity which will be multiple people uh, joining in and being able to request sounds that this server entity should be playing. Um, the use case is, say you are in an office and you're looking for a soundboard, for example, like an audio board, you just kind of want to mess around. It's very easy to set up. You just have one computer that are connected to some speakers, be the server, and the rest can chime in with whatever sound they want to play. All right, um, to get started, I've just created a React app using um, create React app here in this uh, lesson folder. Um, what we want to do now is we want to create a backend folder. And in here, we want to install, um, first of all, you want to init our NPM project here, go through this stuff. And then we want to npm install express and socket IO. This uh, real time, or oh, real time, sorry, this audio bot will be a real time soundboard. So therefore, we're going to pull in socket IO. And we're also going to pull in express because express is a great framework for Node.js. Yeah, so in this file, what we want to do is basically just to kickstart an express server and uh, get socket IO of it running. And what I did is just to follow the um, documentation on socket IO's website. And, uh, oh, sorry, what we do here is just we require express, then we call call express and define to a variable we call app. Then we define a variable called server, require the HTTP module, and call server on our newly created express object here. Then we define a variable called IO, and here we require our socket IO library and pass server into it. There we go. And uh, yeah. All we need to do now is just to listen on a specific port. Let's just pick port 3001 for this example. All right, jumping into the front end, we want to close this backend folder over here and then open up app.js. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, get our development server running to begin with. We do that by, of course, writing npm start in our terminal here. And while that one is starting up, we can clear out some, some trash code, some code we don't need here. And uh, let's put a h1 tag here and here. It says soundbot. All right, let's save that. And then have a look in the uh, the browser, how that looks. All right, that looks cool. Now, the first thing we want to do in our code here is to connect to our backend. And uh, as you remember, we are listening on port 3001. So that would be the port that we connect to from the front end. But first and foremost, we need a specific library to connect with our socket IO real time backend, and that is socket IO client. So let's go ahead and npm install socket IO client. And while that one is installing, we might as well import it. So let's import IO from socket io client and uh, 
first thing you want to do is to perform the connection. So let's define a variable called socket and let's call the connect function on I, our IL object here. And let's connect to HTTP localhost 3001. All right, we're done installing socket IO client. So let's close this terminal down. And uh, let's go to our backend quickly here and just check if we have some connection. So what we can do is on our IO instance, we can um, have the on um, So let's jump back into the backend here to check if we actually connect from the front end. And to do so, we just uh, call the on callback. Oh, and then type in the connection event here. And then right, let's just write a console log in here to see if we get a connection. And if we connect, just type out connected here. Let's save that. And then what we want to do is once again, open a little terminal here and then get our server running. To do that, cd into backend and then call uh, node, node index here. All right, that should be it. So if we once again go here, Oh, we already see the connect here. So we actually do have the connection up and running. Perfect. Now let's head back to our front end and let's get started. So in this start, I talked about we need a server entity and a client entity. So we need to be able to choose what role we are. So we need some kind of variable to determine what role we are. So let's start out by defining that variable. And uh, what I want to do here is to use the use state hook. So let's define role here and our function to set our role. We just call it set role. And what we want to define this to is use state where our initial role will be blank. And uh, we also need to pull in the use state hook here from react at the top. All right, so this looks great. We can now choose a role, but uh, we still need a way in the UI to choose the role. So let's just define a div here and make an h3 tag, let's h4 tag, sorry, put in role, and then just have some very very simple code here. Let's just have two buttons. And um, for both of these buttons, oh, sorry. For both of these buttons, we want to, if these buttons are clicked, we want to just call set roll. So let's call set roll. We're just going to do it inline here to make it quick. And then type in whatever role we are. So in the first button case, it will be client. And in the other one, it will be the server. All right, let's give that a save. But uh, here we go, we have the client and the server. All right, looks great. Now, next step is we would like to have an ability to choose a song and uh, in order to play a song, we need a audio file. So what I'm going to do now is just to drag and drop a test mp3 file into our project. So here we go. I dragged it in test.mp3. Perfect. We have a file now. Um, all right. So if you're the master entity and you want to play this file, 
uh, we need an audio object. So let's define audio to new audio. All right. And um, let's create another div down here. And let's have another H4. And let's call it choose sound. Because since we only have one sound, I will just create a button to play the sound. But if you have multiple sounds, which you will have if you're going to use this in a real life scenario, you probably could make a menu or select or something, something else. But for now, we're just going to go with the button. And uh, it's just going to play play sound. And then when we click this button, we will handle play sound. So let's define our handle play sound here. So that will be a function and we will get in, actually all we want to do in here is just to emit to our backend that we are indeed playing a sound now. So let's just emit a play event here and then just let's just pass in an object here let's give it a name let's call it test sound one and then let's put in the path of the mp3 file that might be useful so so far we didn't import it yet so let's do that uh, import audio file from our test.mp3 here and then pass it in to our play event here there we go so now we can so let's jump back into our backend here and let's listen for our play event here so in order to do that we need to pick up our socket here and then call the on method and then listen for play and um, we will get a play message here and this play message will be the object we sent with the path and the name and all we want to do is just to pass it on to everybody so everybody know that there's a sound going on and to pass it to everybody we need to call io on io the object io we want to emit a play let's just call this is emit a play emit a play here and then just pass our play message that's all. So now, when we from the front end choose a sound, we send it to the back end, and the back end emits it out to everybody uh, listening. So, in order for everybody to receive that message, we need to define a use effect hook here. And um, let's. Um, yeah, let's pull that one in to begin with and let's define it at the top here. So use effect, oh sorry, use effect, pass a function and in here we want to define a Let's define a uh, function called receive message since we are receiving a message indeed. And um, now, if we are the server entity at this point, we want to play that sound. And in order to do so, we need to change the source of our audio object. So, first of all, if the role is server, I would like to 
set the source to our audio file and then play it. Now this is solution will work possibly but what we actually should be doing here is not just point it at audio file because we can but to look at the message we get in M and then choose that path. This would be the correct solution. So um, in order to give some feedback to the user, we could define a new variable here to show the name of what file is actually playing. And to do that, let's define a new variable. Let's call it playing and then have our setter call set playing do, 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 do. all right and this one is just by default an empty string all right so here when we receive our message set playing to m which is our message and then name this is perfect now there's one Thing we need to do more in this effect and that is of course to attach our receive message and in order to attach it we can call socket dot on and then name the event we are listening for which will be play and then basically pass in our receive message here now when we use a use effect like this, we also need to do some cleanup. And to do the cleanup, we return a function and then we do something. In this case, we want to clean up our socket.on play. And in order to do so, we just say socket.off and then put in our event name, which will be play, and then our handler receive message. Um, there's one thing we need to do in addition here to our use effect and that is to pass in the row, row variable because this row will change. So if that variable changes we need to add it to the dependency array down here. Like this and that should work indeed. All right, let's, uh, let's do some testing here. Let's save this one and then add a um, console log at the very top here. We just want to print the message. Oh, all right. So let's open up Chrome again and let's have two tabs open. So we have one server and one client. So let's the first window, we just choose server here and the second one we choose client. Let's get that developer console up and running. Or those dev tools even. And uh, oh, there's one adjustment we need to make and that is we need to show that playing sound somewhere. And that will be here, let's just say playing and then put in our playing variable here. All right, that's perfect. Now let's say the first one will choose server and the second one will choose client, okay? Now I'm gonna choose play sound here on the client. Seems like nothing happened. So what went wrong? Let's see here. Handle play sound, we emit the message. Oh, it seems like we forgot to restart our magnet with the updates. So this socket on that play is not actually working. Let's try again. Choose server, choose client, play sound. Oh, there we go. There's the message. We are playing the sound, all right.
Oh, and this this window we're actually playing the sound. It's great. It's the user's playing test sound down here. Everything looks perfect. Now, there's one problem. See, in both windows it still says playing test sound 1. And that's because we don't have a listener for when the sound ends. So the master entity can't tell the others, oh, hey guys, I'm done playing the sound, so would you please remove this text at least? That would be great. And um, yeah, to do that, we can do one simple change here. And uh, that would be to add a event listener on the event end on our audio. And to do that, we would actually like to create another use effect. And we're just going to put it in here, in our app.js. And this time our dependency array will be empty. So in here, we want to define audio, add event listener, and then we would like to put the uh, our handle in here. So let's just call it handle audio stop. Okay. Now let's define that one. All right. So in here, all we want to do is just to admit to everybody, hey guys, I'm done with um, playing the sound. So let's just uh, emit the message stop. Let's call it stop. And we don't want to send a payload, we just want to say stop. All right. Remember, we need to do our cleanup step. So let's return a function. And in here, we just want to do the same thing as up here. But instead of adding, we are removing our event listener indeed. So let's remove it. All right, looks great. Now, there is one thing here, and that is we are sending a stop to the backend, and that backend will probably get that stop message out. So while we are at it, we might as well go in here in our other use effect and then start listening on the stop, uh, the stop message and define our handle for that. So let's just call it stop audio and we can copy paste it down here in our cleanup and change on to off and then we define our handler let's just call it well we want to call it stop audio and in here well all we want to do is if you get a stop well set playing to null like that and uh, yeah we're almost done guys let's go back to the back end and then just pass on that stop message to do that socket dot on put in that stop message and then well all we have to do is just to admit to everybody hey guys I'm done playing this sound like this. Okay, let's uh, restart back in this time and then have a test. Let's have a test. So, opening up the browser. Oh, wait, there's an error. Oh, it seems like we forgot to add what we are listening on. And that will be the actually. It is called the pause event. It's not called stop. It's not called end. It's called pause. All right, here we go. Back to Chrome. I choose client here, our server, and then over here choose client, and I choose to play that sound. <laughs> Woo! Getting some sound. Great. Let's see if the message disappears now.
All right, disappeared here, and it disappeared here. Great, it worked. <laughs> so, yeah, as I said, the idea is to have this a server and then the several clients. So we could open this browser. A lot of times here, and then just have everybody in here act as a client, and then you could. All of these clients could send messages to the server saying, hey, play the sound. Even the server with this implementation can also play a sound. But yeah, yeah, that's the idea of the real time sound. But hope you guys like this video. If you did, leave a like. And if not, um, don't. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video.